All right, let's talk some coverage. So coverage is always one of the more unique things to predict. So this video a year from now will probably be the worst video I've ever made, right? It's going to look horrible just because coverage is so fluky year in and year out. Guys who have had great careers have had horrible seasons. Jalen Ramsey had a really bad season not too long ago. Uh, you know, Marlon Humphrey had a bad season last year. Who would have predicted that? Like, it's always so fluky, and then some guys will come out of nowhere to have great seasons, like A.J. Terrell, who, not quite out of nowhere, but, you know, we no one expected that, I don't think. So, uh, it's always tricky, but that's part of what makes it fun, is it's the challenge of trying to get this correct. So, let's see what happens. Starting off with the bottom tier, my bottom tier coverage units are the Seahawks, Bears, Giants, Lions, and Cardinals. So, listen... Uh, you know, there's going to be talented players on every unit, but I, these are the ones that I'm concerned about. And one thing I probably should mention right at the top is to me, uh, what I care about with coverage is very much corners. I think that's the most important part and really just having no weak link. Coverage especially is a weak link position. You got to make sure you have several good players. You got to make sure you have depth. And I don't know if any of these teams have depth. For the Cardinals, you know, I like their safeties, like Buda Baker, Jalen Thompson. Like, I think that's good. Um, but the issue really is corners. I mean, you know, Marco Wilson, this has not graded well for PFFs. Uh, some people like him. Some people don't. And same thing with Byron Murphy, that they're kind of hit or miss there. But even with that, like, they don't have much depth. Who's going to be their third corner? Is it Antonio Hamilton, who really should just be a depth guy? Is it Christian uh, Matthew, who was a seventh rounder in 2022? Anytime you have to bring up recent seventh rounders who were just drafted, might be a bit of a concern. So they are on the, at the bottom of this list. The Lions, who, you know, their safeties, again, could be solid. I think Tracy Walker is fine. They drafted Kirby Joseph. That was a pick I liked from them. And they have Deshaun Elliott, uh, who has played well in previous years for the Ravens. So their safeties should be fine, I think. And, you know, there's a chance some of this coverage stuff works out. Like, Mike Hughes was good last year for the Chiefs. Like, you know, maybe he'll continue that. But what else did they have, for the, especially for the corners? Uh, you know, Amar, uh, Amani here Amani Uruware not sure if I nailed that one apologies to Amani but uh you know uh, not you know maybe he'll make me learn his name not quite at that level just yet you also have Ifedi Melifonwu so some tough names on this Lions defense certainly who uh you know I think is fine he might end up being a starter I don't know he looked fine in his 200 snaps last year you still have Jeff Akuda there who you know he is there he's on the roster you also have Will Harris, who's more of a, you know, slot corner safety type, who, uh, not great last year. So, we'll see what happens with the Lions, but that's why they're here. For the Giants, it is one of those, again, what depth do they have at the corner position? Like Adoree Jackson a lot, but, you know, is it Aaron Robinson, who, you know, didn't show much in his 250 snaps? He was a third rounder last year. You have Danny, uh, excuse me, Darnay Holmes, who, uh, again, um, uh, it hasn't had a lot of sample size, but hasn't been great. This is their, you know, guys who are going to be competing for number two corner spot. That's concerning to me. Like Xavier McKinney a lot as well. Uh, but then again, even the other safety, like Julian Love, Dane Belton, I don't know. Uh, not my favorite coverage unit there, obviously, why it's tier five. The Bears as well, who the Bears have addressed this. And that's the nice thing is there is a chance this could work out. Jalen Johnson played well last year. You drafted Kyler Gordon, who I wasn't crazy about in the draft, but, you know, there's stuff to like about him. So, uh, you know, second-round pick, we'll see if that can work out. There's a chance it does. Um, and, you know, uh, Tavon Young and Duke Shelley, if those guys are two and three, or excuse me, three and four corners, it's not the worst corner situation in the world, but Kyler Gordon has to work out for this to look good. If he doesn't work out, it's a mess, and rookie corners tend to take some time. Uh, Jaquan Brisker, again, safety, I think he should be good. I've given up on Eddie Jackson being a star, but he's still, he's not an unvaluable player by any means. And then finally, the Seahawks, uh, again, for the corners, there, there's some intrigue here. I think there's, again, some guys that could work out. I like Sidney Jones for what he can do. I think that should be fine. You have Trey Brown, who was a fourth round pick in 2021. You drafted Kobe Bryant, not that Kobe Bryant, the other Kobe Bryant, uh, in the fourth round last year. You also drafted to Greek. Tariq Woolen in the fifth round uh, in this past draft. So you got some mid-round picks that hopefully can come through. Justin Coleman, I'm, you know, he's a depth guy, nothing more. Uh, the safeties I like with Ryan Neal, Quantre Diggs, and I like what Jamal Adams can do. I wish they used him properly, but I like what he can, you know, I like his skill set. He just, he's in a bad situation for him. But the corners are just, that's a concern. It's tier five for me. 
Okay, tier four, we have the Broncos, which might be a surprise to some people. Steelers, Chargers, Cowboys, Panthers, Texans. And keep in mind in this tier, depth matters. Depth matters a lot. So we're starting off with the Texans, who drafted Derek Stingley Jr., third overall. Interested in that. Uh, really liked him as a player. When I made my Orlando Ostriches, I drafted him in the first round as well. So uh, he's someone who is fantastic, but will he be fantastic right away? Great prospect, but, you know, Great corner prospects don't always hit. Uh, that's the reality of the situation, and they don't always hit right away. Again, uh, like Stephen Nelson, like what Stephen Nelson can, you know, bring to a, a football team certainly. And then, uh, you know, Tavari uh, Tavari Thomas was, you know, incredible as a slot slot corner last year. We'll see if that continues. PFF graded him very highly, but worth noting, PFF tends to grade slot corners higher than like an average corner. That's that's how they do that. Um, the, the safeties, you know, Jalen Petir, who they drafted in the second round. So some people love Petir. So interesting there. MJ Stewart and Eric Murphy are, are fine. I don't think anyone is a star there. But, you know, there's a chance this uh, coverage unit could really work out, though. But a lot of it depends on the rookie, Derek Stingley, and what he can do as a rookie, which I'm not going to put too much pressure on him right away. So that's why it's Tier 4. Uh, the Panthers, uh, at 26 on my list. They are here at Tier 4. You know, J.C. Horn looked good in the small sample size last year. Let's hope that continues. C.J. Henderson, who maybe you give up on, maybe you don't, I don't know. Dante Jackson, who I'm not thrilled about, but he's at least a fine body. And again, you need depth. You need at least three guys who can play. So the C.J. Henderson thing uh, might rely on that a little bit because Xavier Woods and Jeremy Chin, very good safety combo. It's just the, you know, do they have three good corners? I don't know. Continuing with Tier 4, we're going to the Cowboys now, who... Cowboys, some people might say, oh, this should be tier one. I mean, I'm sure some Cowboys fans will say that. But, you know, uh, and also I have to say, Cowboys fans, I feel like get a bad rap. Maybe it's just me and my corner of the internet. Or maybe it's just because Cowboys fans get so often told that they're, you know, cocky and arrogant simply because Skip Bayless is cocky and arrogant that I feel like they're like, they overcompensate by not being that way. I The Cowboys fans I see tend to be great. So I don't know. Uh, that's, just, that's just my experience. Maybe it's my corner of the internet. But, uh, you know, the corners, Trayvon Diggs, who a lot of this depends on how do you feel about Trayvon Diggs. I'm kind of in camp. I don't know. <laughs> like, it's just he's a unique player. It's hard to say exactly. Uh, so I think that's really what it's going to come down to. If you think he's a star, you probably like this secondary unit a lot more because, you know, they have Calvin Joseph, who was a second round pick last year, and he had 138 snaps. So who knows? Looks solid in those, but a small sample size. Anthony Brown, who I feel like PFF really likes. Uh, Cowboys fans really hate, so that's kind of an interesting situation there. They also drafted uh, Deron Bland in the fifth round, so for whatever that's worth. Um, you know, don't love that coverage unit. I, I, Diggs really has to be a star for this, sa this corner unit to work. Their safeties are good. Malik Hooker, Jermon Kirst, and even Donovan Wilson can play, so not concerned about the safeties, but concerned about the, the corners. I am. You need that number two corner. I don't know what's going to happen this year, and I don't know if they have a number one corner. I, he, they might. I just don't know. Um, the Chargers are also in this tier. They added J.C. Jackson, and you have good safeties. Derwin James and Nasir Adderley, uh, they drafted J.T. Woods in the third round, so uh, at least one really good safety, and, and Adderley can play, and Woods should be able to play. Um, but I just don't know who else their other corners are. Like, listen, Bryce Callahan has had some good seasons. He has. Maybe he'll return to form. He didn't have his best year last year, but again, that's coverage unit. You know, who knows what's going to happen. I was not crazy about Asante Samuel Jr. I, I was not. He had some splash plays, and that's cool, and that helps you. Same thing if, you know, we talked about Trayvon Diggs. Like, listen, catching the ball when it comes your way, is there's a lot of value in that, right? Uh, it seems a little fluky, but there's value in that. But, you know, he was Pro Football Focus's 90th rated corner last year out of 116, and that passed my eye test. I didn't love him out of college. Uh, I don't love him in the NFL. That's just kind of how I view it. So if you like Asante Samuel Jr., then the Chargers should be higher. But, it's a weak link position for me, and when Samuel Jr. is the number two corner, it's concerning to me. It just is. Um, number 23, so 23, we have Minka Fitzpatrick and Terrell Edmonds as the safeties. A lot of it's going to depend on, you know, what do you feel about Minka Fitzpatrick? I think Minka Fitzpatrick is fine. I think Minka Fitzpatrick is good. A lot of people talked about his, you know, very poor PFF grade last season, which, you know, it, it happened, right? It's a real thing. It exists. And I get why they gave it to him. I'm going to put more of that blame on the, the lack of talent around him last year and the situation he was put in. But it is possible that he took a step back as well. I, I don't know. Um, 
you know, Akilah Weatherspoon is good. Levi Wallace, I think, could be a good value signing. So, I like that. I'm not You know, Cameron Sutton's fine. So, I, I don't hate this coverage unit whatsoever, but there, there's, some, there's some concerns here. Finally, to round out this tier is the Denver Broncos. Also, sorry if you he- end up hearing any lawn work. Again, uh, people here love the mill. Uh, that's just the way it, way it works. So, I think it's going to be fine. It, I'm not hearing any now, but uh, if it comes up, apologies. But anyways, uh, yeah, for the Denver Broncos here to round out tier four. Uh, listen, there is stuff to like about this Denver Broncos unit. I think the safeties are a good thing where, you know, Justin Simmons is awesome. Kareem Jackson maybe didn't have his best year last year, and he is 34, so that's a bit concerning. But when he's on the field and playing well, you feel good about it. The The corners, though, it's like, listen, Patrick Sertan was good as a rookie. He's another guy who I don't think he was elite as a rookie, like some people make him out to be. I think he, was, he had a good rookie season, and we'll see if he can build off of that. Ronald Darby is a guy who has been very up and down over his career. Seems like it should work, but... I don't know. He's been very up and down over his career. And Kamar Williams, again, he's a fine corner. But, you know, this is getting to the point where, okay, these, you know, clearly the Steelers and Broncos are better than, like, you know, I think the other teams. I think there is a jump there. But who are the stars here? And, you know, these guys aren't spectacular. And there is a concern. If we have a bad Ronald Darby season, what are they going to do there? So that's just why I have them a little bit lower, uh, even though they do have some, some big names on this secondary unit. Next tier, tier three, let's go from the bottom and work our way up, starting with the Rams, who I do have just barely in tier three, who, again, I maybe this is a surprise to some people, because, like, you have Jordan Ramsey, who's awesome, and their safety should be fine. Jordan Fuller, Taylor Rapp, Nick Scott, yeah, uh, like Jordan Fuller a lot, like Taylor Rapp a lot, Nick Scott should be fine, whatever. Uh, Troy Hill is a fine slot corner. He's not fantastic, but he's fine, and he's played the system before, although it's a different system now, so how well would that work out? Uh, but, like, who's the other corner? Is it Davis Long? Like, I don't love that. I'd rather Darius Williams. They lost Darius Williams, and that's something that should hurt them, I think. So, because of that, while I do like the other stuff, I like what Bobby Wagner brings in the coverage unit, because I am factoring in linebackers. I'm just not talking about that much, because they don't matter that much. But, you know, um, I do think that for the, the Rams, I am a bit concerned about that that number two corner position. That, that stuff matters. That stuff matters probably more than having a number one corner, is just having the depth. I, I think it does matter more. Uh, having the the depth and having the number one corner. Um, the Vikings are here uh, where, you know, again, like their safety unit, I still think Harrison Smith can play. Lewis Seen, I, I had as my number one safety in the draft, so uh, I'm a big fan of him. We'll see how well that works out. Uh, for the corners, Cameron Dantzler has been good. I have no reason to believe that he won't continue to be good. Patrick Peterson was actually solid last year, uh, which I did not expect him to be, but he, he did play, play pretty well, and they drafted Andrew Booth. So, we're starting to get to some secondary units that I feel could actually end up being pretty good. You also have Eric Kendricks, one of the best coverage linebackers in the game. Uh, the Jaguars are here in Tier 3 with Tyson Campbell. You got some young guys, right? Tyson Campbell, they added Darius Williams from the Rams, and they have Shaquille Griffin. So this could be a really good corner group for the safeties, maybe not quite as good. Rashawn Jenkins, I don't love. And, you know, Andre Sisco, who was a third-round pick, who some people were really high on, that might be the weakness. But I'd rather a, a secondary that has good corners than a secondary that has, you know, good safeties. So I'm not too concerned about it. I think Devin Lloyd should help them out as well, uh, the guy who they just drafted in the first round. Number 18, so uh, interesting, you know, situation with the Raiders were Trayvon Mullen, who is good but was hurt last year. Uh, you have Rocky Asin, who was good last year but has been very up and down over his career. Nate Hobbs is a good uh, slot guy, and, you know, you added Anthony Everett as well for the depth, I would presume. The safety unit isn't spectacular, but it's not horrible either. You have Trayvon Moorhig, uh, who's good, uh, and I think you have Duran Harmon, who's good, and Jonathan Abram exists, so maybe he, you can figure out, you know, get that potential that was there when he was drafted. But again, they have guys who can play. They have a complete, uh, you know, coverage unit, but where are the stars? I don't know. So that's why they're here. Number 17, you have the Chiefs, who has Legereus Need, who is good. You have Rashad Fenton, who is good, and you drafted Trent McDuffie. So this could be very, you know, you also have DeAndre Baker on the roster if you care about that. This could be a very good coverage unit. It has the potential. Uh, you know, you lost Tyron Matthew, which I think will hurt them. I'm a Tyron Matthew fan. Uh, but you still have Juan Thornhill. You drafted Brian Cook in the second round. You have you added Justin Reed, who didn't have his best year last year, but clearly has a lot of talent. So uh, another coverage unit I could see end up being very good when it's all said and done. 
the Bengals. The Bengals, for me, their coverage was great last year. You have Jesse Bates and Von Bell, great safety tandem, one of the best safety tandems in football. You have Shadobi Awuze, who was great last year. You have Mike Hilton, who should be good in the slot. Uh, you added Daxton Hill. You added Cam Taylor Britt. But you might be having Eli Apple as your number two corner. That might still happen. And he was solid last year. He was fine. And if that, if you're as good as you are last year, then you should be fine. And they have all the same guys they were last year. But coverage is not that simple. It just it's weird. One year you'll have the same unit and they'll play great. The next year you'll have the same unit and they play horrible. Um, so that's just kind of the situation they're in. But they can also sustain an injury because they do have some depth with some of the guys they drafted with Taylor Britt and Daxon Hill. So. That's kind of what I'm okay about. They also drafted Tyson Anderson, a safety in the fifth round. So I, I'm not overly concerned, but there's some concerns here. Uh, the 49ers. So 49ers are at number 15. They are here in tier three. Because again, uh, added Trevavious Ward, which, you know, uh, I think 49ers fans were kind of saying, I wish we spent that money elsewhere. But getting good corners is important and they need more corners. So I actually don't mind that move at all because you also have Emmanuel Mosley. But and you have the Queens Denards, so you have like you know you now have three good corners, which you know I think matters. I think it's a good thing to have three good corners. And while you could have maybe felt like yeah, let's get a guy who's more of a slot guy, I think they want to be more in a position where they're able to withstand an injury, which they now can because they've been banged up over their you know history. You also have Jason Verrett, who's just a great value guy to have you know he might still you know have it and come back from injury and if he doesn't you're not relying on that uh you also had drafted samuel womack in the fifth round so you have that you have dante johnson on the roster and then for the safeties jimmy ward's very good don't necessarily love who to have at number two with it's either hufanga or odom will be the other safeties but you know i like the rest of the coverage unit enough i'm going to put them in the top half of the league the Balls, also known as the Washington football team, are here at 14 with their safeties of Cameron Curl and Bobby McCann. They also drafted Percy Butler in the fourth round. So uh, those are all good options for safety. The corner, it really is going to come down to William Jackson. It is. who William Jackson was great for the Bengals. So the Washington football team said, hey, we have a good coverage unit. We're going to add William Jackson and have a great coverage unit. And then William Jackson wasn't great last year. So it's not the best scheme fit. That's probably fair to say. But can he figure it out? We'll see. If he can, they should be great because you have Kendall Fuller, who's great. You have Danny Johnson, who's solid. Uh, Benjamin St. Juice is mostly depth. But for a fourth corner, that's fine depth. Uh, you will just need William Jackson to step it up and at least be a number two guy. That's what you need out of him, which is possible. But if it doesn't, they're probably going to be worse than 14th. But if it does, they're going to be much better than 14th. So that's what it comes down to, I think. Number 13, you have the Cleveland Browns, who have John Johnson, Grant Delpit, and Ronnie Harrison, a really good uh, safety trio there. Ronnie Harrison, still one of those weird moves where the Jaguars were rebuilding, got rid of a solid young player. Like, like what are we doing? Like, why are you just getting rid of him for basically nothing? Uh, I like the corners. Denzel Ward, I'm a big fan of. Uh, Greedy Williams, I think, is very good, very underrated, I would say. Uh, and you have Martin Emerson, who they drafted in the third round. So we'll see how well that works out. Their, their linebackers are good as well at coverage. So very interested in seeing uh, how that works. But I think they should be a very good uh, good group, especially when you factor on play a lot of cover two. So you know they're a very analytically driven team. They know it's a passing league, defend a pass, and they do a good job at it. Um, number 12, the Eagles, you have Darius Slay and G James Bradbury. So, uh, that, you know, tandem right there, they're getting up there in age, but if they can play well, I mean, you could get great years out of them. Slay was good last year. Bradbury wasn't. Coverage is fluky. Hopefully Bradbury bounces back. You also have Avante Maddox. So there's a chance that this corner room is great. And their safety room is good. Anthony Harris, who has been up and down over his career. You also have Marcus Epps, who is good. And you added Jaquiski Tart, who's fine. Uh, so, again, uh, there's some concerns on this uh, coverage unit. But there's also potential for really great things for this coverage unit. Tier 2. Yes, the Jets, who have had a bad coverage unit for a while, I am putting at Tier 2. Although, I will acknowledge there is a big risk here. So, the main thing is... Uh, you know, the coverage unit. So they have DJ Reed from Seattle, who it's a similar system. I suspect he'll play well. For their depth, Bryce Hall and uh, Mark Michael Carter both should make solid depth. The question is, it's all going to come down to Sauce Gardner. The Sauce Boss is going to be the guy that it's all going to come down to, uh, I think. 
Now, you might be sitting here and saying, well, wait a second, didn't you dock the Texans for that with Derek Singley, a prospect who you like, but you're docking them because he's a corner? And that's true, and that's also why I've, I have docked the Jets from that, because their coverage unit is good without this. They have, you know, I, I like their safety unit a good amount as well. Jordan Whitehead can definitely do some stuff, and, you know, Ashton Davis, Elijah Riley, and LaMarcus Joyner, one of those should probably work out to be the other safety, I would assume. The The thing that I'm kind of separating is I think Sauce Gardner is pro-ready. I think he'll be good as a rookie, and that's what I'm guessing is going to happen. It's a guess. These are all projections, but you know, not all first-round prospects are built the same. I really like Sauce Gardner, so I'm going to be more confident that they will be successful with Sauce Gardner. There is a chance they do not end up as Tier 2. I have them as the worst Tier 2, but that's why I have them at Tier 2. Um, the Titans are here at Tier 2. Uh, Kevin Byard, who's fantastic. Amani Hooker, who's fantastic. And they added a, a sixth rounder in Theo Jackson. So, uh, safeties, great, fine. The corners are maybe where the question marks arise with you know Christian Fulton and Elijah Molden, who are both solid I, I like them both. Uh, Caleb Farley is very fascinating. He was a, my favorite corner of his draft class, but the injuries have just really derailed his career so far, and I hope that he can stay healthy because he looks great if he can stay healthy. They also drafted Roger McCreary, so they have guys. They have like four guys that I feel okay about. Roger McCreary was a second-round pick last year, uh, and that's, to me, more important than having a star. You have to have the depth, and their safeties are so good. I'm willing to give them tier one, but can't quite give him tier, I'm going to give him tier two, excuse me, can't quite give him tier one, though, just due to the lack of uh, superstar talent, I would say. Uh, the Patriots here, so, yes, the Patriots, who we were joking a bunch about, oh, you know, uh, Jalen Mills is going to be this, you know, Jalen Mills is now the, uh, you know, cornerback one, listen, Jalen Mills was good last year, though, like, Jonathan Jones has shown flashes, I'm not sold on him, but, like, Malcolm Butler, he was good just two years ago. Like, it's not like it's been forever since he's been good. I feel like we forgot about him. But, like, he has had good season. They added Mark J Marcus Jones. They added Jack Jones. All these guys can do so many unique different things. There's uh, linebackers, Devin McCourtney, Adrian Phillips, Kyle Duggar, Jabril Peppers. You have all these guys who can do so many different unique things. I trust Bill Belichick is going to figure this out. Bill Belichick, we can't keep doubting Bill Belichick when it comes to coverage. He always makes us think, oh, that's going to suck, and then it's great. That's what he always does. I'm not getting fooled this time. The Patriots are here in Tier 2. Tier 1, or excuse me. I keep trying to say tier one. I got to get through tier two first. We have the Atlanta Falcons at tier two at number eight. Uh, and they're very different, right? The reason why they're here is they have AJ Terrell and Casey Hayward. So cool. Tier two, tier two. Like you're not going to be tier one uh, because I don't love your depth. You know, Eric Harris and uh, Jalen Hawkins are the safeties right now with Richie Grant, who was a second rounder last year. Maybe he can do something. Uh, you know, don't love their depth, but you have two great corners. I'll give you tier two just for that alone. That really is kind of what it is. The Buccaneers, who have Carlton Davis, Jamal Dean, and Sean Murphy Bunting, who have been a very good 1-2-3 corner combo. Bunting didn't have his best year last year uh, when we saw him, but uh, and again, everyone was hurt for on the secondary last year. So while, yes, it had its bad moments, usually those bad moments were, you know, with guys who weren't playing, you know, guys who weren't supposed to be playing. Yeah, Richard Sherman, who they signed off the street, had a couple of bad games. Like, I'm not going to hold that against the 2022 Buccaneers. They also have Ross Cockerell, who was a really good uh, corner last year, actually. Like, he was usually just supposed to be a fourth guy, but he played like a solid corner last year. He's not a star, but you don't expect him to be. He's a fourth corner. Uh, he also drafted Zion McCollum in the fifth round, so they have a lot of depth. They can withstand injuries, uh, as we saw last year, where they still weren't a mess when they had all of their top three corners down, which is crazy. Um, and then for the safeties, Antoine Winfield is a star. Mike Edwards is very good. They did lose, uh, you know, a safety in the offseason in Jordan Whitehead, but they added Keanu Neal. They added Logan Ryan. I'm not sure if either of those guys will be Whitehead, but they can at least play a similar role, which, you know, should be able to patch that up a little bit. A lot of depth here, and that's what I like about this uh, coverage unit. And the top of Tier 2, I have the Bills, who, Travis White, listen, uh, maybe he isn't quite as good as we thought he was going to be when he started his career. When he started his career, we thought he might be perennial best corner in the league conversation. He's had some down seasons for him, which have still been good seasons, but just maybe not. He's had more, as many good seasons as he's had great seasons at this point. So is he good or is he great? I'll let you be the judge. But, you know, I think that's how I view him. Uh, they drafted Kair Alam in the first round. 
probably to be a Levi Wallace replacement. They still have Teron, uh, they still have Taron Johnson uh, as well. So, you know, good coverage linebackers, I would say, as well with Milano and Edmonds. Great safety combo, Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer. They got some stars. They got depth. Uh, they're here at the top of Tier 2. Finally, Tier 1, I had the Dolphins, Packers, Ravens, Saints, and Colts. Starting off with the Colts, uh, you know, they added Stephon Gilmore. Kind of one of the real underrated signings this offseason, I think. Gilmore's still good. Uh, I like him. I think that I'm expecting that to work out, especially with the Colts, who know how to use those veteran guys. You know, we saw with Xavier Rhodes. They still have Isaiah, Isaiah Rogers and Kenny Moore as well. So even though they lost Rocky Asin, they, they purposely gave him up because they felt like they had depth. They also had Brandon Faiskin, who, Faiskin's weird. He, he graded 108th according to PFF, but I actually liked what I saw from him in the film, so is PFF right? Am I right? You know, who knows, but uh, that's what I felt about him. Their safeties are fine. Rodney McLeod, uh, Justin, uh, Jimmy, Julian Blackman, not Justin Blackman, that is the, uh, you know, uh, former wide receiver, and they drafted Nick Cross in the third round. Those guys are fine, uh, whatever. You also have Darius Leonard, good coverage linebacker on top of this, but I like their corners enough. I'm giving them tier one. Um, the Saints, here are definitely tier one and they you know get used so well with Marcus May and Tyron Matthew being the two uh additions who can definitely both be used well by Dennis Allen I would expect they added Daniel Sorensen maybe he has something maybe he doesn't but he's just trying to be depth which I think is fine for depth uh PJ Williams who's more of a safety corner hybrid should be fascinating and then for the corners you have Marshawn Lattimore, who's great. You have Bradley Roby, who's very good. And you have C.J. Gardner-Johnson, who, you know, will get under your skin if you're playing against him, it seems like. So when you add on to the depth of Paulson Adebo and Alante Taylor, who was a second-round pick they just drafted, they got depth, they got stars. Uh, this is Tier 1 for me. Number three, the Ravens, because, of course, the Ravens are here. First, their safety tandem, Marcus Williams, Chuck Clark, Kyle Ham Hamilton, even me, who wasn't a huge Hamilton fan, I still think he adds some value. And if the Ravens draft a defensive back that I don't like, I pretty much immediately say, oh, I got that one wrong. Because the Ravens don't get defensive back prospects wrong, it seems like. Uh, Marlon Humphrey is, I'm willing to bet on him. I know he didn't have his best season last year, but he's still, uh, you know, the, the bigger sample size to me says he still has it. Coverage is fluky. You're going to have down years. Peters is coming off an injury. I hope he can return to form. If he can, they should be fine. Uh, cause you know, if they can't though, I guess that's where things get a little bit tricky because you have Brandon Stevens and Kyle Fuller, uh, Fuller didn't have his best season. Maybe he can return to form. I don't know. You did draft a couple of guys in the fourth round, Jalen Amar Davis and, uh, Demarion Williams were the other two guys. So there's some guys that can play, but it's like, I don't know if I want to rely on Brandon Stevens. I don't know if I want to rely on Jalen Amar Davis as a rookie. I want to rely on Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey. And as long as those two guys are healthy, though, they should be tier one. So that's why I'm still putting them in tier one, but not in the top two. Uh, number two, the Packers who have, you know, J.R. Alexander, Eric Stokes, who I think could take a big step forward, but he was good as a rookie, someone who I really liked. This is why you draft fast corners. They can, they can do things. Rasul Douglas is also someone who had a great year last year. It's a small sample size. We'll see if it works out, but he did have a great year last year. Also for the safeties, Adrian Amos and Darnell Savage, great tandem. Devondra Campbell did everything well last year. Quay Walker might be able to help out. Who knows? Uh, but, you know, J.R. Alexander being healthy should make this coverage unit a lot better. It was still really good last year, so I, I feel good about that. Number one, though, the Miami Dolphins. I mean, you got Xavier Howard. You got Byron Jones. Uh, you have Nick Needham, uh, who can be a good third guy. Uh, you have Noah Igbenogany, who's not good. But, you know, those top three guys should be good. And when you add on Javon Holland, who's a great safety, who was a great safety as a rookie, Eric Rowe, who's still a very good safety, and then Brandon Jones, who's, again, depth. Fantastic coverage unit. I have it at number one in football. What do you guys think about all that? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.